Well, the pressure washer didn't last long. So last night I was uh, doing the video, I was working on the part of the video where I show how to use a surface scrubber. I heard something uh, clinking inside, then I heard a loud grinding sound, and all at once the pressure washer locked up. So my brother gave me some advice I want to pass on to you. I took a picture of the cord laying on the ground. I sent it to him in a message, text message, said, well, that didn't last long. He sent me a message back and said, quit buying junk. So that's my advice to you guys. Quit buying junk. If you need something, save your money, sell some stuff in your garage, do whatever. Buy something decent. Don't buy this. I bought this Simpson pressure washer. Well, because I've had one before and I've had other smaller ones that did okay. But this thing tore up way too quick. I ran it for seven minutes and it's already torn up. And look, I didn't put this together. This was in the box. I un unboxed this when I got it. So this was a defect from the manufacturer. So I'm gonna take it back to the tractor store, um, get my money back, and then go buy probably a steel or another brand that's a whole lot better. So I'm gonna go ahead and publish the video because I tried to cover all the features of the pressure washer and show you how it works. And the whole point of the video is if you're thinking about buying one of these, maybe I can talk enough about it or show you enough of the features to help you make an informed decision. Personally, I would not buy this again. I don't advise anybody to buy this. I've had, had two of these, both of them I had problems with. The other one worked great off and on for about a year and a half and I finally sold it. Um, and I decided to take a chance on this one because it was on sale. It was on a Father's Day sale. I think I paid $3.29 for it. Um, Anyhow, I'm going to take it back. There's a couple of things I really don't like about it. The first thing is a, is a danger problem. So I burned my hand on it yesterday, and I'm usually pretty attentive about stuff like this. But, you know, you pull the cord out this way. Well, the muffler is right here, okay? So when I pull the cord out, my natural inclination is to put my hand down on it to stabilize myself while I pull the cord. The muffler is right here where your left hand goes. I wasn't thinking. I was busy dealing with the camera and the water and, and trying to get this done before dark. I put my hand on it, I pulled the cord, and then my hand got singed. That's, that's really bad. That's, that's a very, very bad design. And there's a couple other things on this that are really bad design also. Um, the fact that all these wires are hanging out, why do they continue to do this? All the manufacturers that make these small engine pressure washers leave these wires hanging out with that oil level sensor. Put a cover over it. That's terrible design. The other thing is uh, your valves here where your water goes in and comes out stick out past the vertical side of this bar. I've had one of these Simpsons before that turned over on its side and the valve broke off. And if it breaks off, you're going to have to buy the whole pump assembly, which is $150. If you go to a shop to have it put on, they're going to charge $200 bucks to have it put on. So. That, that's a bad design to have these valves sticking out. They should be in a protected area where there's no way it could turn over and you could, you could directly hit these on the ground. And there's some other problems. I'm not going to go into it. Um, I tried to cover everything in the video. Uh, so maybe if you already have one of these, you need to know something. There's something in my video that can help you. But would I buy this again? Absolutely not. I read the reviews. A lot of people said, just don't. And I should have taken that advice. So I'm going to take this back to the tractor store, get the money back, go buy something decent. Anyhow, let's get in the video. I'm going to show you all the features, talk about it, and I appreciate you watching. Today I'm going to review the Simpson 3100 PSI pressure washer. This is a cold water gas powered pressure washer. It has a 2.3 gallon per minute flow rate and a 208 cc CRX engine. So what I'm going to do today is take it out of the box, show you what's included, put it together, and I'm going to let you listen to it run. So the goal here is if you're trying to buy a pressure washer, if you think you need one, maybe you can make an informed decision after watching this video and decide if this is the right one for you. This pressure washer is strong enough to power a surface scrubber like that to scrub a driveway or a sidewalk. So I'm going to scrub some of my driveway and some of the sidewalk and maybe a couple other things and let you see how it runs. So let's take it out of the box, plug it up, and let's get started. Okay, so let's see what's in the box. So I've already cut open the top of the box. So in the box, you get a quick assembly guide right there, a piece of cardboard, and there's the pressure washer and all the assorted parts. So I'm gonna get all those out and let you see what's included, and we're gonna put it all together. 
All right, so first off, there's part of the wand. Here's the other part of the wand. I'll put that together in a moment. There's your 25 foot pressure hose. There's the frame handle. You get a little bag of um, stuff that includes your owner's manual and some nozzles, which we'll look at in a couple of minutes. There's also a 16 ounce container of oil and then the pressure washer. By the way, lift with your legs and not your back. All right. Um, you also get a random piece of plastic. Okay, first off, let's put it together. So, inside the bag that came with it, there's some uh, parts. That's a hose that you use to put down into a, um, a soap jug or some sort of soap dispenser so you can wash your car or wash something else. You got the nozzles, which I'll put on in a minute, and you have a couple of um, screws which are used to hold the handle in place. So first, let's get the bubble wrap off here. That stuff is surprisingly sticky. All right, put the handle on. Then take the two screws and uh, connect the handle. Let's see if we can get a really good up close picture of that. All right, now let's put the uh, spray wand together. So that's real simple. And all this stuff only goes together one way. So there's a plastic uh, cap on here that's a protective cap. Unscrew it. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, put the spray hose on here, hook up the spray hose. So if you're having a hard time tightening the um, end onto the wand, you can use some channel locks like this. Just be careful and don't strip it out. So if you power this up and it starts leaking right there, then get a pair of pliers and connect it. Just be careful and don't strip out this part because if you do, this uh, the wand will be worthless. All right, so the hose has some uh, elastic string on it holding it together. Let's take that off. So both ends of the hose, by the way, are identical, all right? So there's a protective plastic cap on the wand. And some people call this a wand, some people call it a spray head, some people call it other stuff. So put your hose on, push it snug and connect it. And this is a design feature that I don't understand on all these wands on the consumer pressure washers. This thing is so close to the handle, it's hard to connect up. They should have moved it a good three to four inches away. I don't understand that. I think it's, a, it's just a bad design. They do what's functionally easy for manufacturing, but for consumers, it's hard. And if you're not real strong, sometimes you get this thing put on and you have a hard time getting it off. So, all right, so now that's all together. Now let's plug the hose up to the unit. Okay, so the spray hose plugs up right here. So there's a, I'm gonna just rip this off because that always gets in the way. There's a protective cap on there. Pull that off. And this is something else I consider to be a design flaw. When you put your hose right here, these two hoses, the spray hose and the, the garden hose are so close together that it's hard to get your hand in here to either tighten one up or release one. 
And these things have sharp edges, so that does and this does. I mean, with a little bit of effort, they could have made this a whole lot more ergonomic and easy for people to work with. They should not have put these things so close together. They should have pushed them, put them like um, four inches apart where you could actually get your hand up in between them to get a good grip. So anyhow, that's together. Now we have to um, put the hose right there, but before I do that, let's put the oil in. The oil cap is right here. So you have to take it out to put your oil in. And whenever you take this out or put it in, make sure that you're very careful because it's easy to uh, cross thread your screws. And if you damage this, you can't just run to the hardware store and buy another one. You have to probably go to the manufacturer to get one. Also, when I'm dealing with oil, I always keep a piece of paper towel because I just seem to get oil all over my fingers. So if you look at the oil stick, it has a measure on there, which may be hard to see. So you want your oil, when you put it in, to be about midway on this stick, all right? I really wish they made these caps out of metal. I don't know why they don't. So I keep a funnel on hand. You can buy these at any dollar store for a couple of dollars. So also, when you set your oil cap down, don't set it on the ground because you don't want it to pick up trash and that to go back in your engine. So I always set my, my oil stick on a piece of paper towel somewhere. So I'm gonna put it right down there, all right? Your pressure washer is going to come with this type of oil. This is in a 16 ounce bottle. Okay, you may not need the entire 16 ounce bottle. So what you have to do is slowly add oil to your engine and then you put your oil stick in and you check it. Every, every You put in a few ounces of oil and check it and you need to make sure that your oil is somewhere between the min and max on this line. I usually try and get it midway. So make sure your funnel is clean, and mine is. Go ahead and put in some oil. All right, so I've poured the entire 16 ounce bottle in there. All right, let's put the oil stick back in. Wait a second, pull it back out and check it. Now, it may be hard to see, but oil is just over halfway up the stick, all right? So I've got the proper amount of oil, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in and leave it. The oil that comes with the pressure washer is an SAE 10W30 automotive detergent oil. This is made for a four-stroke engine. So just make sure when you go to buy oil, you don't buy um, something that's not really made for your engine. Like don't put motorcycle oil in it or don't put just the cheapest oil you can find. If you really want it to last for a while, take the manufacturer's advice. I'm gonna put a picture in the video of the chart that comes with, in the owner's manual showing what different type of oil weight. That, the 10W30 is the weight. I'm gonna show the chart showing what type of oil weight you need for different ambient temperatures. And that depends on what area of the country you live in. Here's the viscosity chart from the owner's manual. So I've marked it low viscosity and high viscosity. For most of the country, you want to be right here in the middle and run a 10W30 oil. For lower temperatures, you want a 5W30 oil. For higher temperatures, you want a 30 weight oil. But for most of us, you need a 10W30. And that's what comes with the pressure washer. This is the pump on the pressure washer. As I've already shown, the high pressure line comes out here. This is what goes to the spray wand. Your garden hose plugs up to the top port. And if you're looking at the pressure washer going that way, you have to plug, you have to uh, screw this black cap on counterclockwise. Get it nice and snug. Don't over tighten it. So now you can turn your water on and you can start washing. So a couple other things. This is your pressure washer unloader valve, which you should never really have to touch. You can do slight pressure adjustments by turning that with a 17 millimeter wrench. I recommend you don't mess with this unless you really have a big drop in pressure. So you can pull this pin right here out. You can remove the whole valve and you can adjust the needle that's inside this. But again, you shouldn't touch that unless you really see a big drop in pressure. It's already preset from the factory. So you notice that these valves are brass. That's because brass doesn't corrode. That's why these are made out of brass. Also, if you wanna use soap to uh, wash your car or something else, the pressure washer comes with this clear tube. This tube has two ends. The black end is what goes down in the soap bottle. 
this sucks up the soap. What's on the black end of this is a filter, or the, this black end is a filter. This end goes down on that valve right there. That lets the soap go through the hose and into the stream that's coming out of the pressure washer. All right, so now I'm gonna go look at the back side. And we're gonna look at the thermal relief valve. On the back of your pump is a gold colored valve. That's called a thermal relief valve. Some people call it a TRV. That's a safety feature. So when you're pressure washing, water is constantly circulating through the pump and that helps to cool the pump. If you stop washing, but you leave your engine turned on, heat and pressure are gonna build up inside the pump. When that gets high enough, this valve is gonna open up and let hot water come out. So don't, if you see water coming out of this, don't put your hand down there because it'll burn you. Also, if you're running your pressure washer and you stop running water for up to two minutes, it could damage your pump. So don't do that. So if you're gonna stop for longer than just a few seconds, turn your engine off and recrank it. But this is a safety feature. Don't take this out and don't mess with it. You can replace this, but I don't advise, don't advise doing that unless it breaks. So if you see water coming out here, don't put your hand down there. On the side of the pressure washer, you have the on off switch, which essentially grounds out the engine to turn it off. You've also got an oil level sensor, so that's a safety device. If there's no oil, this will also ground out the engine to make sure it won't start. So it essentially takes the power away from your spark plug. This is pretty sloppy. I don't like how they run these wires outside of the engine. They do it because they want the sensor to be replaceable. They want you to be able to re replace it if it doesn't work. But this is just sloppy. You don't see this on the more expensive pressure washers. Also, in addition to that oil sensor, there's a banner going across the gas tank that you have to remove before you can put gas in that says, hey, put oil in the, in the engine. So I'm sure that not all of them have that, but this one did. So on the front over here, we've got the uh, crank handle. You pull that to crank it. You've got the choke on the top right here. You've got the gas on the bottom. So to turn the gas off, you push it all the way to the left. You push it all the way to the right to turn the gas on. To choke it, you push this all the way to the left. You turn it to the right to turn the choke off. And there's arrows on here which show you how to do that. Also, let's look at the uh, air filter. So on the top right here, there's an air filter. You just remove this uh, wing nut bolt on the top. And you need to clean your air filter. Don't run it for a long period of time without cleaning your air filter. So you take that off, take this nut off, and you can pull off your air filter. There you go. And there's a little rubber washer. Make sure you don't lose that. That needs to stay on there. All right, so let's put all this back together. And don't over tighten that. Put this back on. Tighten that back down. Over on this side, you have your spark plug. So right here under this thing is your spark plug. Let's see if I can get a better picture. So you can pull your spark plug, plug wire loose just like that. Inside there, there's a brass connector. It actually looks like copper that goes to your spark plug. So if your pressure washer doesn't start, one of the things you can try is to remove and clean your spark plug. Be careful, don't stick your hand down in here when this is hot, because you will burn your hand. This is the muffler. The exhaust comes out right here, so if this is hot and you put your hand down there to remove your spark plug, you could burn the front of your hand. All right, so let's put gas in it and crank it up. Okay, here's something I really don't like about this pressure washer. If you look down in there where you put the gas in, you see that red cap? You're not supposed to remove that. That's a full cap. That tells you when it's full, so you shouldn't fill it above that. When I went to put gas in, I had my gas up about here. When it poured in, the gas bounced back out, got all over the gas tank, and got on my face. So that's, that's dangerous. I don't think they should do that. In fact, I'm going to take that red thing out. I've got to give uh, Simpson credit. They actually used a metal cap on their gas tank, and their gas tank's metal. So I've had pressure washers before that had a plastic gas tank that cracked over time and had a plastic top, which over time it would get warped in the heat and wouldn't seal right. So they actually put metal on here, which is good. Before you crank your pressure washer for the first time, take my advice and buy some pump lubricant and use it frequently. So you put this in your pump and that helps lubricate your pump so the pump doesn't wear out. It'll definitely make it last a lot longer. 
You can buy different brands of this at Lowe's, Home Depot, or Walmart, or order it on Amazon. There's a lot of places you can buy it. And what you want to look for is cold water pump lubricant. And I recommend you get the type that has a screw-in connector like that so you can screw it into your cold water intake and you push the cap on the top and it blows lubricant up into the pump. So let me show you how that works. You take this can of lubricant and you can connect it here where your cold water normally goes. All right, and be careful because this lubricant can has plastic uh, um, threads and you could easily damage it. So just be careful, take your time and go slow when you're plugging this up. All right, since it's connected now, go ahead and spray it. And spray until it stops. And you might wanna give your can a little shake. You'll see this white fluid going through there. And that's all. So this is a one-shot thing. You, this is a one-time use, and this can is about eight dollars. Now let's reconnect the hose. And that lubricant soil, so it's going to get on your your uh, screw-in surface here, your ring that you use to tighten this down. So you may need to get some paper towel and clean up after you spray that lubricant in because it does get everywhere. Okay, so I've got the oil in, I've got pump lubricant in, put gas in, got the water turned on, I've got everything connected up. So before you run this for the first time, don't put a tip on, but pull your trigger and let water run through it for about 20 to 30 seconds to get all the air out of the lines. So I'm gonna do that right now. So you need to run it until a steady stream of water comes out of your nozzle. Okay, this is the first time I'm cranking it. So to crank it, you turn your switch to on, you turn your gas to on, and you turn your choke to the closed position. So for a cold start, you need to have your choke closed. So now, let's see if it cranks first pull. Okay, so it cranked and ran fine. So here's a couple of things to think about. Your engine will run all day long. Your engine's air-cooled, it'll run. It's just like a lawnmower engine. It can run for hours and hours. Your pump is the thing you have to be worried about overheating. So if you're using your pressure washer and then you turn off your water flow, if you, if you release your trigger and you stop your water flow, you can't leave your engine running too long because your pump is gonna overheat and that could damage your pump. And to replace the pump on this pressure washer is going to cost you about 150 bucks for the pump plus whatever cost there is in labor and gaskets and other stuff. And there's a thermal relief valve on the back. So if you stop running water through your system and you see water coming out of that thermal relief valve, you need to turn your engine off. Don't leave it running because your pump will get too hot. Okay, so I'm going to put the yellow nozzle on here. And here's how you put this on. There's a ring right here on the end of the wand. You pull the ring down like this. Let me see if I can get you a better picture. This thing goes up and down, okay? Pull it down, put your nozzle in, make sure it's in all the way, and then push that ring back up. And that ring needs to snap in position just like you heard. So try and pull your nozzle out, make sure it won't come out. If it won't, then you're ready to go. So let's crank it up and run it. So I'm gonna turn it on. I got my gas on, choke is closed. And don't, you know, this is dangerous. So they put the um, they put the muffler right here on the side where you crank it. So when I went to crank it, I put my foot on there and then I put my hand on the muffler, which is burning hot. That's a terrible design. So just make sure you don't put your hand on there when you reach down to grab the pull cord. Okay, let's swap out and let's take a look at the red tip, see what it does. Got it put in. 
And again, don't put your hand right there. I've already burned my hand doing that. So watch this. So that will throw water out easily 15 feet behind my truck. All right, so now let's swap this out. Let's go with a green tip. So that was the red one. Also, when you take a tip off this, don't do it where it's facing you because if this line is pressurized, when you pull the tip off the tip, when it pulls loose, it hits you in the face. So be wary of that. All right, that's the green tip. All right, now let's do the white tip. That's a much wider, uh, much wider angle coming out. Now let's do the uh, black tip, which is the one you use for washing a car. This is pretty much no pressure at all, the black tip is. In their book, they call this the soaker tip because it's wide open. It's really just made to put um, some sort of cleaner on your car. So let's do the cleaner next. I want to show you how that works. All right, so I'm going to leave the black tip in here for now. I've got a bucket over here, uh, right here, hope you can see it, that I've already put um, detergent. By the way, you don't have to buy their special soap they recommend you to buy. That's not necessary. So what I've done is put Dawn detergent in the bucket. All right, so I've got the hose that came with it. Let's see if I can get you a better picture over here. I got the hose that came with it. I'm gonna put the hose on my little valve over here that I showed you earlier. It's real easy to get on. Put the other end of the hose down in your water. Like that. And I've got detergent in there. And what's funny is, the hose is full of air, so it floats. So you got to make sure it stays down in there. All right, so I've got the soaker end on my wand. I'm going to turn it on, and let's see some soap come out of it. So it's funny that in their YouTube video, they actually show, show foam coming out of the end of this. Well, no foam comes out. But if you go look at my car over here, I sprayed the car down and there is a soapy, soapy surface on the car now. So you're not necessarily gonna see any spray foam come out when you use this black tip. And it depends on what you have. If you have, um, if you have a certain, certain type or the, you know, the right type of detergent you may actually see some foam come out of here but i've got about four ounces of dawn detergent in the water and i'm not seeing any foam come out so let's do it for another minute or two and let's just see what happens
Okay, so as you can see, there is actually detergent coming out of it. It foamed up a little bit on the car. So let me make a point to you right here. Again, I've got the black tip on here. You don't want to use these other tips. A lot of people will just grab a tip and put on here. If you use one of these high pressure tips like that on your car, you're going to take the paint off your car. And also, if you use the red tip, the red tip has enough pressure to actually damage your tires. So don't use the red tip if you're going to be washing a car. And be careful, don't actually pressure wash across your skin with that red tip because that will cut your skin. So you got to be really careful about that. All right, so let me show you what not to do. I saw a friend of mine do this and it ruined his pressure washer. This is a jug of muriatic acid, which a lot of people put on drive walks and um, sideways to etch them, which means to clean it, clean the con concrete really good. Don't put your tube down into a container of this muriatic acid. You don't want this running through your pump because it will absolutely damage your pump and for sure avoid your warranty. If you're gonna use a jug of anything, make sure it's a, some sort of detergent or soap solution that is safe for your pump. And what I've used for the last 10 years is Dawn detergent. I use about four ounces of it for about three gallons of water. Works great. Here's another safety feature that I forgot to cover earlier. So if you see your handle, your handle has this red thing, okay? You can push that forward and this will keep your handle from pushing or your, your trigger from pushing inward. So that's another safety feature built into it. Honestly, it's pretty worthless because nobody ever really uses this i think the notion is to keep kids from coming along and turning on the pressure washer but you have this thing you can flip down and it snaps into place it's sort of hard to to pull it in and out there but it will keep your handle from being pushed okay so now i'm going to demonstrate the scrubber scrubbing a driveway but first let me show you something if you're over about five feet tall and you have a pressure washer take my advice and buy an extension wand this is a three foot long wand that plugs right into your pressure washer. It's threaded to fit almost all pressure washers on the market. And you see, I've already got one plugged up right here on my surface scrubber. So I'm gonna use the surface scrubber and I'm gonna scrub some of the driveway, all right? So I've got the water turned on. 